If one day you get a private message in your Twitter inbox from the United States Embassy, pay attention to it. Hello folks, how are you doing? Welcome to today's vlog. In this episode, I'm gonna be telling you about my trip to the United States of America last year, my first ever trip to America, a country I had been dreaming about for years, and what it led to all these exciting opportunities. If you're new to this channel, welcome. Welcome everybody. Please hit the big red subscribe button down below so you can keep in touch with all of my content from now on and hit the notification bell because that is literally the only way YouTube will show you my videos if you wanna keep in touch with what I'm up to. Okay, so this time now, last year, I was in America for my first ever trip. Crazy story, right? I remember this day vividly and I'll probably never forget it. I was in London with my friends around March last year, March 2017, and I got this private message, right? I do get a lot of private messages, but this message was from the United States Embassy to the United Kingdom. I don't get many messages like that. And when I got that message, I was like, what the hell have I done to upset the United States of America on my social media platforms? And then when the United States of America's Embassy said to me, Sean, can we go for a coffee? I was like totally mind blown. Can I go for a coffee with the United States Embassy? Who exactly at the Embassy wants to go for a coffee? Adventure everything. I went with it. I went to meet the United States of America's Embassy for a coffee. And it was um, the guys from the, the press team, the press department, the media department of the, the Embassy. They say they watched my vlogs, which was really cool. And they, they liked my content. And they, they basically said they were organizing a trip for UK bloggers and vloggers to go to the United States on a trip that they were calling Exploring American Values. It was an exchange program. I would be on a special exchange visa and the trip would be basically a bunch of British bloggers and vloggers taking over to various different parts of America over a 10 day period. This was based on a survey the United States Embassy had done with British youngsters in high school. And the survey was basically asking British teenagers what they thought of America, good and bad. And of those good and bad thoughts, they had a number of words that were um, key to actually putting that trip together. So they had a list of big words on a, on a thought bubble or something like that, and the big ones were like gun control, freedom, politics. So they basically designed this trip with us bloggers based on that research. They had set up a number of different uh, organizations in the United States who we would meet with, charities, groups who are advocates for various different causes, political parties on both sides of the spectrum. And it just sounded so interesting to me. And then when I finally got the, the message saying, you have been selected, I was like over the moon. We would be officially British public diplomats. Um, and when somebody says to me, you're gonna be a British diplomat on a trip to America, like that just like something for the CV, right? Something to tell the grandkids. It all got put together quite quickly. And, and the day came, the end of May, a couple of days before Memorial Day, I got the flight from Edinburgh. There was a couple of other Scottish people there on the flight. First port of call, um, we were in DC to celebrate um, the Memorial Day weekend, which was really interesting. That is where we kind of got to grips with the whole political scenario. Uh, we had a group of minders in America, which was an agency that the US Embassy works with to arrange these cultural trips. And this agency would basically look after us and take us around all the sites, make sure we were um, fed and, and comfortable basically on our trip. We were in DC for two days. Uh, we actually got to go into the Memorial Day service, saw Donald Trump speak and met a lot of different people around that event. We also then drove to Baltimore one of the days we got to meet the police chief in Baltimore, who is, of course, under a lot of pressure and is dealing with a high uh, crime rate um, and is also dealing with a lot of police incidents of brutality. We got to meet people, representatives from Black Lives Matter. And from Baltimore, which was an interesting city, the one thing about Baltimore I would say is we didn't get to any time to explore it. And I would have loved to because it seemed like an interesting place. But from Baltimore, we went down to Florida. Now, Florida um, is a place that a lot of British people go on holiday every year because of the, the, the adventure parks. A lot of families here take their kids to Florida every year, to Orlando, to Disney World and all these types of places. Our trip to Florida came quite soon after our meeting with the NRA. We actually got into the NRA headquarters, which is something um, which is quite unique because your NRA, as an organization, as they, um, they only deal with United States constituents, they very rarely accept meetings with anybody who is not um, an American citizen. So for us British people to be allowed into their headquarters for an interview with their head honchos, was something that was quite um, unheard of. I guess one thing I was surprised about the NRA, it was a very um, corporate place. They did have a, a shooting range underneath the building, but um, 
It was interesting to get that perspective because as British people, we basically view as a country guns and gun culture very differently. We're quite unanimous in this country as being pretty happy that we have gun laws that restrict sales totally so that we can be pretty assured that nobody around us has guns at all. And that is not to say that I'm criticizing America. I'm, all I'm saying here is it's different for us. We don't have guns and we are comfortable with that. You guys have guns and we were exploring that because it's a curiosity for us. That is it. So we got to meet the NRA to discover their side of the story. We got to meet action groups who are against guns in America as well, see their side of the story. We also went to the, the Florida gun show in Orlando, which was quite um, unbelievable. We went to this place, it was like a the most enormous supermarket you could ever imagine and there was just every type, size, shape and colour of gun you could imagine. You could literally have started a war with the armory that this place had. It was just a, it was just a fascinating experience and then to actually be outside and to see like young kids, 10 year olds and stuff, holding up big guns in the car park with their families, uh, it was just different. Like we don't have that culture here. We also got to see the service that marked the one year anniversary of the Pulse nightclub shooting tragedy and meet a lot of the victims of that, the victims' families. So it was a lot of people on a lot of different sides of the gun debate. A lot of people commented on my videos at the time, like, why are you so interested in this? You're not American, it's not your place to, to come and explore. And hopefully what came across in my videos of that trip is that I didn't try and judge at all. I was really just there to witness and explore and to observe what was going on in America, and American gun culture. And it was a trip that was organized, as I say, by the United States Embassy, not by us who were on it. So we were just literally following um, a program. Uh, and I think it was a very, very good program by the US Embassy. It was diverse. We saw a lot of different sides of different debates. There was no political bias because we got to see different political sides as well. We actually met with both the Democrats and the Republican parties. We also took a day off, probably two days off actually in Florida, where we got to have some fun. We went to Disney World. We also went to Cocoa Beach. Cocoa Beach, if I'm honest, not the nicest beach I've been to in my life. When I imagined beaches in Florida, I imagined like some kind of paradise places, but Cocoa Beach was probably something similar to Portobello Beach, the beach we have here in the city in Edinburgh. But from there, we flew on to Texas. I was really fascinated by going to Texas. We stayed in Dallas. I really, really enjoyed it. I enjoyed the, the culture, the cowboy culture. We went into a lot of different barbecue places and wow, like that's another thing. Like we just ate so well on that trip. And like, I just absolutely loved that. We went to a rodeo in Fort Worth as well, a really cool experience. I think one of the best memories I have of Dallas is um, we did this thing, and apparently this is quite common in that part of America, a lot of families basically invite people into their homes who are on trips to America for the first time. So the embassy hooked us all up, we each went in groups of two and three and were invited into a family's home for dinner. And I was invited into this family's house which was on the suburbs of Dallas and the family were just so, so nice. They invited their neighbours, we all had dinner together. We learned about each other's uh, backgrounds and we were, what we all did. And we were there for three or four hours and it was just such a great experience to be in a true American family's home to learn more about their family and what they you know, how they lived in Texas. That was just such a great cultural exchange. And that was the last part of the trip. Such a good, good experience, and it gave me a real taste of America. I think the thing is, we only really had 10 days in the United States. The US is an enormous place, there's so many different states, so many diverse different cultures and types of city and types of food, and that it was always gonna be impossible to see all. So there was a lot of comments uh, made on my YouTube channel, people saying, why didn't you come to this place? Why didn't you come to that place? It's hard, I can understand it. It's hard to put together a trip like that, even for the US Embassy who've got a lot of resources. It would be difficult to arrange that type of thing. There was a lot of parts to it, but I think they did a really good job of putting that trip together and we met a lot of different types of people in a short amount of time. But what it did for me, a couple of things it did for me, lots of things it did for me. I think it was a life-changing trip actually to America. I'd always been interested in the culture, always been fascinated by America, always wanted to go to the United States of America. It gave me a good taste of what American culture is. I came home from that trip thinking, I have just sampled America. There is so much more for me to get to know, to understand and to experience and I want to come back. We got to see clearer some of the differences between the United States cultures and British the difference between politics in the United States and what we have in the UK, but also some of the similarities. Like I think the thing about the USA and the UK from someone from Britain is there are so many similarities between us. So immersive as well. Like we were thrown into this together as a group of people who had never met before. That it got kind of emotional a lot of times as well. We were all chucked into situations that we were not really always comfortable with because it challenged us. It got heated sometimes some of the debates, like we didn't always agree with stuff. But I think the next big thing for me that I got away from this trip is the bonding between an amazing, amazing group of British bloggers that we were, people that I'll hopefully be friends with for life. We were all bloggers from the UK, we were all from different backgrounds and we all got together and that was probably the biggest takeaway for me is that 
some of the people on that trip were truly inspiring. One of the big things about this trip for me, and I haven't really told anyone this, when I got that message from the United States Embassy, I was currently in full-time employment. I was working uh, for a bank in a marketing position, getting a really good salary. But I knew it wasn't for me, like I wanted to push this thing on YouTube that I was doing my own content and I always never had the reason, I never had the, the drive to actually do it. To go full time, to leave my job, to leave something I hated and devote all of my time and passion and energy into what I do now on YouTube. When I got that call from the US Embassy and said, would you like to come on this trip? I never had holidays from work, but there was something at the back of my head thinking, this is a once in a lifetime experience. I need to do this one way or another. So I quit my job. That was the start of my full-time adventures as a YouTube vlogger, as a blogger, as someone who creates communities online, that moment. And it was the call from the US Embassy that made me do that. So. I will never forget that. So for those reasons, I've got so much to thank the United States government, really, because the US Embassy is the government department, right? For actually inviting me on this trip. I think the United States is somewhere I would actually like to live for a few years. I think it's somewhere that I could grow. It's an adventure, the land of the free. That's what I'm excited about. I think it's a land of opportunity. It always has been seen as such, and I certainly feel it is a place where there would be opportunities for me. Uh, and that makes me feel good. So thank you very much for watching everybody. I appreciate it I hope you have a great night morning evening afternoon or whatever time of day it is wherever you are in the world. Take care